Welcome to this series of tutorials on how to use the Siemens DTCO 1381 Digital Tachograph version 1.4. These tutorials are designed to introduce you to the basic functions of the unit. They're divided into five sessions, each lasting approximately five minutes. The sessions will cover the parts of the unit, inserting your driver card and making manual entries, recording your activities during the working day, ejecting your driver card, and understanding basic printouts. So let's begin with the parts of the unit. On this side of the unit we have the printer drawer. The printer is a thermal imaging printer so there's no ink used, it simply burns onto the paper. Press the button and the drawer will release down at about a 25 degree angle. The paper roll can be simply dropped in but be sure to leave a small amount of paper beyond the drawer before you close it again as this will stop the paper jamming the next time you need to make a printout. You can use the menu button to find information, input data, make some limited adjustments to the unit itself and generate printouts. The buttons are simple to understand and use. The up and down buttons let you scroll through the options on the screen. The back button will move you back a screen and the OK button will confirm your choice. The insertion slots for the digital tachograph cards are similar to those found in ATM machines. The driver inserts their card here and the co-driver here. The driver and co-driver record their activities by pressing these buttons here. The first button is for the driver and the second for the co-driver. When you're ready to eject your card, you press here if you're the driver and here if you're the co-driver. Beyond this panel is a connection point for a vehicle download unit. It's opened by pressing against this side of the panel. When the connection lead is inserted and a company card is in slot 1, the vehicle's activities will be downloaded since the previous vehicle download. The last part of the unit is the display screen. Your screen will look similar to this before you insert your card or switch on the ignition. Moving from left to right, the first thing we see is the clock. Now this can be set to local time, which is indicated by this symbol here. It can also be set to UTC time. When the clock is displaying UTC time, this symbol won't appear. If it's something you haven't come across before, UTC time is a worldwide clock that doesn't use time zones. Regardless of where you are in the world, UTC time doesn't change. Fortunately for us in the UK, it's easy to know what UTC time is because it's identical to Greenwich Mean Time. Now, although the clock displays the current local time, this doesn't affect the clock inside the unit that records onto your digital driver's card. That clock only ever recognises UTC time. So, of course, on the last Sunday in March, when we move our clocks forward one hour, the time that you see in the display clock will not be the same as the clock that's working inside the unit. We'll talk about this in more depth when we cover manual entries in session 2. So, moving on from the clock, we see this symbol here. This is the operational symbol. This is what you see when the unit is in standard operational mode, that is, it's being used by a driver. There are other symbols that indicate that other types of cars have been inserted into the unit, such as those that are used by the police or VOSA or vehicle mechanics. But as a driver, this is the one you should see when your card is in the unit. Moving on from that, we see the speedometer. As with any speedometer, it will reflect the speed your vehicle is moving at the time. And below this is the odometer. And as with any odometer, it will display the kilometers covered since the vehicle left the factory. The final images we need to be aware of are the activity symbols. These display the activity of the driver at any given time. The driver records their activities by pressing the number 1 button, and the co-driver records theirs by pressing the second button. There are three activities to choose from, rest, period of availability, and other work. However, on version 1.4, when the driver's card is inserted, a fourth option is available. It's called unknown time, and it's indicated by a question mark, but we'll deal with that in the next session. Well, that's our brief introduction to the parts of the unit over. I hope you found it useful. In session two, we'll cover inserting your driver card and making manual entries. Thanks for watching.